Hare Krishna. Our intelligence is not like a fixed deposit. It is like a stock market share. When we invest money in a fixed deposit, it stays as it is. But when we invest in a stock market, it can go up or it can go down depending on the trends in the stock market. Similarly, when we acquire spiritual knowledge and we nourish our intelligence through scriptural study, then that intelligence is a valuable asset like money. In fact, much more valuable than money. And this money, this wealth of intelligence that we have, when we study a scriptural book, when we say, okay, now I have memorized the Bhagavad Gita's verses, now I know the concepts of the Bhagavad Gita, that itself does not make us intelligent because our intelligence doesn't stay at one level. In fact, Krishna talks about intelligence in the three modes in the Bhagavad Gita. And therein he says that intelligence and goodness is characterized by the capacity to understand what is to be done and what is not to be done. In 18.30 he says, Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha karya karye bhaya bhaye bandham moksham cha yavetti buddhi sapartha satviki. So intelligence and sattva is able to discern good and bad actions based on their consequences. Then he says, intelligence in passion is looks only for pleasure. And see, if something is pleasurable, let's do it. And it looks short term, it doesn't look long term. And he says, intelligence and ignorance, it says, actually, what it does is, it just sees things opposite of what they are. It sees that, Sarvarthan vipari tamscha adharmam dharmamitiya manyate tamasavrita sarvarthan vipari tamscha buddhi sapartha tamasi. So Krishna says that in the mode uh, in tamas we see the right to be wrong, the binding to be liberating, and the liberating to be binding. When we thus see distortedly, that is the result of the mode of ignorance of tamas. So here, when Krishna is Krishna says that intelligence can be in sattva or just tamas, now these three modes keep influencing us constantly. And because they keep influencing us constantly, uh, whichever mode is prominent in our consciousness, our intelligence will get shaped accordingly. And that's why we can't, we can't say that I have studied the Bhagavad Gita, now I know the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, we may know the Bhagavad Gita intellectually, but practically in terms of our actions, we may act not intelligently, but impulsively, foolishly, even self-destructively, if we are impelled by the lower moods. And that's why one aspect of intelligence is to know the limits of intelligence. That our intelligence is not a fixed asset. Whereas stock markets can go up and down and the modes can also go up and down. But in general, in the material world, especially in the present age, the lower modes, rajas and tamas are prominent. And that's why the stock of our, intellig of our intelligence will keep going down. And that's why intelligence means for us to periodically connect ourselves with the source of all intelligence. And the source of all intelligence is ultimately Krishna. In 15.15, he states, Sarvasya chaham rudisan nivishto says that from him comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. And these three, knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness are the foundation of intelligence, of buddhi. So when we regularly connect with Krishna uh, by prayer, by scriptural study, when we regularly study the Bhagavad Gita, then the stock of our intelligence will stay high. Then our intelligence will be a resource that we can count on, that will guide us towards proper action and will guide us towards ultimately the supreme satisfaction of eternal devotion, of eternal ecstatic absorption in Krishna. Hare Krishna.